Rita High School is a very prestigious school, famous especially for its gifted program. Here, at this school, the best 5% of students are taken into a gifted program which gives them special areas to harness their academic skills. Also, they have hundreds of special perks that the normal students don't get, like special lunch hours, and even privileges of getting different hairstyles in school without being scolded for it. Among the students who are studying in the school, there is one particular one who just joined the school, and he has become the best academically, and he wants to join the gifted program. His name is Time. Time doesn't really know how to get into the program, but, he has heard of it and he wants to get in. That day after delivering his special kid who had just aced the entrance exam speech, Time heads to his class and sits down next to a pretty girl named Grace. She is a rebel and has her hair curled up, which is definitely not allowed for peasant students like her. She and Time become acquaintances, but before they could talk anymore, the student inspector, Thamarong, arrives with his gang to teach the new students the rules of Rita High School. Firstly, girls and boys aren't allowed to sit together. He even goes to lengths with Grace about her hair, and does not particularly seem to like Time. When he notices that Time has a badge of the gifted student, huh, he stashes it away. Thamron explains how only the best students can get into the gifted program, and even if Time was one of those special ones, there is no way he could get in the program as it had already been discontinued a year ago now. Elsewhere, the director of the school heads back to the ministry hoping that he can convince them to reinstate the program back to what it was before. The ministry however is not willing to get the program back because of the incident that happened a few years ago. Back in school, Time goes to talk to Thamaron and learns that the school had discontinued the gifted program after the gifted students from 2018 had done something against the gifted program. Time is frustrated. He had joined the school only because he wanted to join the gifted program, and now it looked like the whole thing was very unlikely. In his dorm room, he ponders how he could take charge and make the gifted program come back. He suddenly remembers about the student's move website established by the school, where students could petition for some changes to happen in the school. He decides that he will make a petition for the gifted program to be brought back. Time and his friends even go as far as creating pamphlets and promoting the cause all over school. Grace takes notice of this as well. She has been having issues with teachers calling her out for her hairstyle, and she wants to have the privileges that the gifted students have. She decides to help the guys out, but the problem is that the student's library has really bad Wi-Fi, and on on top of that the student's move website had been blocked by the school IP. Grace and Time decide to head to the admin's office at night to hack into the computer and make the website accessible to all. Grace comes up with an idea before leaving the office. They could just download all the info of the students and use their data to create fake votes for the petition. Time is reluctant at first and by the time he makes up his mind, the student inspector and his gang come for their regular checks. Time tells Grace to run away while he downloads the files from the PC. He doesn't want her to get caught up in his mess. Time takes a lot of time to copy just a single Excel file for some reason, and is forced to run away when Thamaron arrives in the room. He rushes running through the empty halls of the school back to his dorm. Time is, however, forced to enter the school's gymnasium to hide from Thamaron. There he notices a few other students gathered discussing some grand plan about their school. But before he could hear anything of any importance, Thamaron catches him. Thamaron wants to hand him over to the admin for misconduct, but time convinces him that bringing back the gifted program is the best step for all the students. Deep down, Thamaron wants to become one of the gifted students as well, so he lets time go, for the time being at least. The next day, the petition reaches overwhelming heights and almost the whole school votes for the petition, and the ministry is forced to bring back the gifted program to Rita school once again. They appoint a new admissions officer, Miss Darren who will be looking over the whole process. Elsewhere the director calls upon his ace and a gifted student from his previous batch of the gifted, Pong. He tells him that his work will once again come in handy. The ministry had never intended to remove the gifted program. They just needed something from him. He tells Pong that something huge is coming their way. The ministry had indeed planned something big for the director as Miss Darren prepares a red liquid disguised as tea hoping to serve it to the director later but for some reason she decides not to. The director appears to her as a more useful asset alive than dead so she decides to postpone the ministry's plan to assassinate him. The director joins Darren with her activities in the school alongside Palm. Despite getting what he wanted, Time cannot forget the people he saw that day in the gymnasium. He is obsessed. Time believes that they were the gifted students from 2018. 
the same ones who had caused so much trouble in school, causing the whole gifted program to collapse. Tan decides to go and investigate the gymnasium again that night and finds a group of students who somehow seem to have supernatural powers. He watches them as they discuss how they will bring about the fall of the director. The leader of the gang displays a tape, explaining how that would be the end of the director. He then plays the tape. A sudden large ring is heard in Time's ear and his head starts beating with pain. Time screams in pain and is soon discovered by the group, sneaking up on them. Time runs away as they confront him hoping that they would just forget him. The group, however, cannot let anyone know of their plans in time. No. They discuss different ways to get rid of the guy but Pang doesn't want to do anything harsh. He concludes the meeting asking everyone to search for a more docile way of dealing with the guy. The next day, Om, Joe and Jack grab time as he is walking to class and take him to the gymnasium. They introduce themselves as the gifted Avengers in a really cheesy way, and time is more than confused. Wave, a more sensible one among them appears to clear the air. The other members Mon, Korn, Claire and Pang also arrive and time is finally able to understand the whole ordeal. He had suffered a headache from yesterday's sound because he has what they call the gifted cells and just like the rest of them he too will get superpowers soon. Time thinks this is all some kind of a joke but it wasn't. The whole gifted program was never meant to create academically sound students. It was meant to create mutants. Ohm shows off his cool ability to time just to prove the point. He can make things, including himself disappear and then again reappear out of nothing. Claire also has an ability. She can read anyone's feelings. Joe and Jack have telepathic abilities. Mon is super strong while Wave can control all kinds of electronics. Which is cool but the school has made the Wi-Fi so bad so his abilities are worthless at the moment. The other guys have abilities too but not cool enough to mention. All of this is very cool. But Time doesn't want anything to do with whatever the group was doing. There was one problem however. Time had already become a part of their group when he heard of their mission. Um, Joe and Jack decide to train Time until his abilities come to him. Time has no choice but to comply. Over the next few days, Time is trained in body and mind by the group. During one of these training sessions, Thamaron notices him hanging out with the gang. He later goes up to Time during lunch and tells him that the gang is a bunch of hooligans. He also relates to Time the real incident that destroyed the gifted program last year. The group had planted a bomb in the director's conference which had resulted in several injuries and which is why the ministry had dismantled the program. Time gets furious and confronts the group about all of this but the leader Pang does not disclose the full details about the events. He is just angry that all Time cares about is getting into the gifted class and not nothing else. He tells Time that he needs to trust them and that they aren't doing anything bad but Time just won't have it. He warns them that they need to stop whatever they are doing or else he would complain to the teachers. When Pang and the group don't comply, Time does exactly that and heads straight to the admin to complain that the ex-gifted class is up to no good and even have superpowers. He is convinced that the group wants to create a fire in the school somehow. The admin doesn't believe him and honestly who would but just then. Palm arrives and hears everything regarding this topic. He too ushers time to take his delusions elsewhere, but heads straight to confront Pang. Palm warns him that he will have to take actions against them if he tries to once again cause disruption in the system. Pang is very calm about the whole thing and tells him that he can deal with them however he wants but he will do what must be done. That night, time cannot seem to focus. He keeps having visions of the science lab and decides to walk to that place hoping to find the gifted culprits who had planned to start the fire in school. He reaches the lab to find the glass door closed and a fire starting inside the cupboard. He tried to shatter the glass and get the fire to stop but he cannot. Suddenly Om appears from behind him and helps him. Outside a gang of masked students are running away after causing the fire but are apprehended by Mon and Korn. The two beat them up easily especially thanks to Mon but one of these guys manages to escape. The others who were captured and rounded up by the gifted gang. Time realizes that the gifted students never really wanted to start the fire. They just wanted to catch these hooligans red-handed in the act. They were a part of the anti-gifted group who are against the whole gifted program being run in the school. The four students who had been caught still have the audacity to berate the gifted students. But Pang simply places his hand on the man and tells him that he will do exactly as Pang commands and wait until an inspector arrives and confesses all his crimes. Surprisingly, the man agrees to everything. This was Pang's power. Pang then explains to Tan about how he was partly at fault at creating a toxic group like the anti-gifted. At first, Pang had felt the disparities and differences among the students in the school and how students from the gifted class were treated better than the normal students and how the whole school's ideology was based on this. He decided to change all this and formed a group composed of gifted and normal students but the normal students felt that the gifted program was the root cause of all their problems and no peaceful way could be found to deal with it. 
and thus had created the anti-gifted crew. These students were the ones who had planted the bomb in the director's office as well whose blame was falsely pushed upon the gifted students. The one guy who had escaped makes a call to their leader who assures him that they can let the gifted people enjoy this victory because he has something huge planned for the gifted selection exams that are coming soon. The exams were soon approaching. A day before the exam, Joe, Ohm and Wave sneak in a signal enhancer for the poor Wi-Fi which Wave would use the next day to stop the exams from happening. However, the group accidentally ends up starting the Wi-Fi enhancer on the same night. The whole school is graced with a fast Wi-Fi signal after a long time and everybody seems to be quite happy. Elsewhere, the gifted group realized that time has abilities now. He is able to pinpoint the location of anyone as long as he knows the person. He doesn't really know if he can pinpoint the location of an object yet but his powers seem to be on point for any living being. After practicing his powers, time leaves for his class and is called to the director's office. The director seems to have taken keen interest in him as he was really good in his class and an exemplary student. He tells him that he wishes the boy best of luck for his exams to get into the gifted category. The exam however was just a ruse. The director had been planning, as usual, to use the audio waves to find the mutant students amongst the normal ones and use them for the gifted program. He and Palm realized that the Wi-Fi signal being strengthened meant that the gifted students were planning to interrupt the exam somehow, and he would not have it. The director orders for a signal blocker to be installed in the school immediately and an announcement is made that to avoid cheating the Wi-Fi will be disabled in the school premises for the next day. This had become a big hindrance for the gifted group who certainly couldn't afford another Wi-Fi enhancer, nor could they hack into the system as Wave's powers depended upon the Wi-Fi. Peng then asks for time's help to locate the Wi-Fi blocker. During the exam he commands the teacher to let Peng leave and Peng locates the Wi-Fi blocker with his powers. He reaches the place as well but decides at the very end that he doesn't want to help the gifted students. The words of the director had managed to manipulate him and he betrayed the trust of his friends. He doesn't even tell them about the location and heads back to his exam hall. The gifted group accept their failure. They are pretty bummed about time but they accept defeat. Suddenly. Claire realizes she can access Instagram again and so the Wi-Fi must be back. Miss Darren had for some reason destroyed the Wi-Fi blocker. Taking this opportunity, Ohm steals the hard drive from Palm's PC which had the audio waves the director was planning to broadcast. Peng then proudly walks to the director's office to come up with a deal. He first offers the audio files in return that the director resigns. This however is too much of a price for the director to accept so instead Peng tells him to remove all disparities from the school and make such that all the students are treated as equals, regardless of their academics or their class. This, the director can accept. He even announces this news to the whole school. In return the audio plays in every room where the exam is being held. The sound echoes in the ears of all but only the gifted students feel the sting in their head and scream in pain. The school had now gotten its new batch of gifted students. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and hit that like button to help our channel grow. Turn on the notifications so you won't miss any of our new videos. Thanks for watching.